Welcome to Pat's Picks. I hope you're having a great morning so far. Thanks for coming by if you're new. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. If you're returning, you're freaking awesome. You, uh, you're the best. So anyways, let's get into it. Uh, to start the day off, we're going to take a look at the futures market right now as of about 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, we are looking at, uh, like we're going to open up about sideways to a slight gap up. I wouldn't even really call it a gap up going off of this. Currently, the S&P 500 is at 37.78, so SPY equivalency of around 377-ish um, is where I would open up about right now if it were to open. So what I expect tomorrow is probably slightly less volume than we saw today while people are waiting for the FOMC meeting, which is on Friday, I believe. And um, from there, we'll see what the Fed says and how much they raise rates, how many points, whether it's 50 or 75. Hopefully it's more 50, but at this point, I just want them to get the pain over with. You know, we can have a few weeks of just playing puts and make money and then and they can reverse and we can make calls, <laughs> make calls, make money on calls. Anyways, that's what the futures are looking at, looking like right now. I'm a little tongue twisted. I'm going to keep this quick and simple, though, if you're um, new. Once again, I don't go into too much detail. If you have questions, feel free to leave them below and I'll get to them. Um, but I just want to cover some key levels here so we can get on with the day and make money. So let's get into it. All right, first thing we're going to look at is SPY, my favorite guy, the SPY. So SPY gapped down hard this morning, and um, if you saw my video that I posted at 3 o'clock this morning, which I film always at nighttime, just so you know, and then I have it ready and post it in the morning. So I was anticipating a huge move down, not quite this big of a gap down, um, but I did anticipate us being able to hit 373, which was... Um, my ultimate target on my watch list so uh, it eventually did hit it so it was it's crazy what happens once you get that volume explosion if you look back here we're on a 15 minute chart um come on baby um you can see we were trading up and down in this channel from 407 to 418 about four 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 eighteen. my goodness get it together buddy so anyways, we're trading that channel and we finally got that breakdown. And as you can see, it's been a few straight days that ultimately led us to the bear market territory today. So what I'm looking for tomorrow, um, a break over 378. If we do get a little push, you never know. Um, bear markets have great bull rallies. So there's always the chance of a nice bull rally. If that does happen, I do expect us to get resistance, strong resistance at 390. And it would take a lot for us to break through that, but you never know. You know, play. We just play the cards we're dealt. Um, these are just key levels I'm looking for. Not a financial advisor, not a fortune teller, just a father trying to make a living here. So I hope we all can make a ton of money, ton of money together, and um, get financially free if you're not already, and and live our lives because life is too short to live that nine to five, baby. So let's get on with it. Looking for that break below 373. If we do get that break below and the volume is there, I think we'll continue this downtrend and stay in this channel and we could bounce around 366. And then um, if we have another big move down, we could ultimately bounce around 358 if it's a lot of volume. If it's a similar day to what it was yesterday, that's what I would think would happen. Ultimately, I think we'll land around 363, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, we could just trade sideways because yesterday or today, whenever you're watching this, um, was really bad. So down 3.8% on the day, $14.80, which is crazy. But if you watch trends, you can see, you know, it's it was no surprise to me. And I know there's a lot of traders who weren't surprised by this by this move either, so... Um, the more you learn, the more you learn, baby. Anyways, let's get on to the next one. AMD. Um, another one of my favorites. I, I cover a lot of the same stocks, you'll notice. I throw in different ones here and there. 
um, that I see that are moving, but ultimately I love trading. Spy, AMD, Apple. Um, those are my top three, actually. And then I, I sprinkle in other ones here and there. So, But I like to get very familiar with, with stocks, and I recommend if you're new that you do the same. That way you can get the feel for it. That's how I knew these moves were coming on these stocks. It was no surprise. All these levels, these are numbers I've seen and I've played before. So, anyways, what I'm looking for tomorrow on AMD, uh, break over 88.50 could put us into retesting the 89.90 range. Um, and I expect strong resistance there, probably a lot of selling. So, um, if the market continues to trickle down, I'll look for that break below today's low of 86.64. And then from there, um, maybe a slight bounce around 85.50. And then a continued sell off to eighty three dollars if the if the volume's right. So that's what I think happened with that. And I didn't even draw the trend, but you can see it. I'll I'll draw it right here, right now, live in studio. You can see this downtrend, and I usually just kind of end um, when I'm drawing lines. I end it basically on the end of the day. That's how I do it. I try to keep it pretty clean. It doesn't have to be exact, but. These are just things you look for. I like my downtrends red. I like my uptrends green. All right. Just like my grass. So, and my money, right? And that's what I'm looking for on AMD. And you can see if we break 83.20, we can get that move continuing down. Um, the market likes even numbers. So I would expect a move close to 80. And if we look back here quickly on the hour chart, you can see what I'm talking about here. These are levels that. I'm looking at, I'm not making these numbers up, and this is technical analysis. This is how it works. You can see this is the hour chart, so each one of these candles is, represents an hour of time, if you're unaware of that, and you can see how it bounces. Um, so yeah, we'll break below 82, 83, and it's been a while since we've seen that low on AMD. I probably... Oof. Long time. Let's look at the daily. Let's take a second for AMD here. So yeah, break below 80 and um, we could bounce around that to about 72. If we break below 73, you can see there's a gap here. Ultimately, gaps have to be filled. So uh, expect if the market continues to sell off, which I I do highly anticipate over the next couple weeks, I think AMD will continue to move downwards towards 70 eventually, but we'll see how it plays. But that's where I'm getting those levels, in case you're wondering. Or if you think I'm just pulling out of the sky, that's cool too, but whatever helps. On to the next one. We're going to cover Apple. And Apple has been... Uh, struggling just like the rest of the market apple is a great indicator i like to watch it and it's one of my favorites because it, it represents kind of how the market's feeling a lot of the times um, not always there are times when apple can go up and the market's going down or vice versa i've seen it but a lot of the times you can see it make moves ahead of the market and you, you can kind of get an idea of how it's feeling it's a good sentiment sentiment indicator so well what i'm looking for on apple <clears throat> excuse me i'm looking for a ultimately a break below 131.44 or a break above 134 um if we get that break above 134 then uh 137 would be my target basically to refill this gap that we created this this morning um and if we break below 131.44 i am watching for 128 125 and 123 in that order obviously so uh and for my amd targets i think i think i said them 85.50 yeah 83 um if we rip 90 yeah so i covered that so um yeah pretty simple i like to keep it that way there you know the stock market is overly complicated it doesn't have to be that way there's too many big fancy words we don't have to be freaking rocket scientists to figure this out you know I'm just a high school graduate. It's not a big deal, guys. Don't overthink it. If you have questions, let me know. On to the next, baby. I keep saying baby and I can't stop, so sorry about that.
I'm working on it. S Q skew. So I'm looking for the break below 62.50 and a break below uh, above 65.13. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna make a move down. Ultimately, my goal for this is about $52. Um, with the pips pit stop around 58, I think we'll bounce around there and get a strong push towards 52. Um, if we go, if we get upwards momentum, break above 65 could put us back to 70. Um, and just like similar plays, you can see there's a gap there. So a lot of the times it kind of acts like a magnet. Those levels is kind of how I look at it. It just ultimately is pulling it towards it. Um, it's the same way I knew spy would hit 380 and then ultimately down to 373 and the same way we'll watch it possibly bounce to 380 um, because it just acts as sort of a gravitational pull in the universe. I know that may, didn't make sense, but uh, that's just kind of how it works. Not a financial advisor, obviously. Not a wizard over here. So we're going to take a look at Redbox. If you've been following the channel for the last couple weeks, you would know. I've been calling Redbox to make moves now since last Wednesday, I believe, was my first video I posted on it, which was, when was that? I think this day. Anyways, last Wednesday, um, I it's been highly shorted, and there's chance of it moving up, and that's what it's done. So now it hit 18, which was what I was looking for today, if it continued to make a strong move up. Um, 18 was my target. Here it is. But, um, and you can see we got that strong bounce. And where did I get 18? Well, I got 18 from over here. I see all these bars in this 18 range. And that tells me that there's some people that bought it at $18, likely back then, that are still holding it, that are just like, yes, I can sell it. And that's what happens a lot of the times. So there's bag holders and they have limit orders in and it'll just automatically sell. And that's why you'll see stocks bounce off of certain ranges, whether up or down. In this case, I anticipated it to bounce off of 18 and move down. But like you can see here, it went all the way to 27 and it's highly shorted. So that doesn't mean that it's going to continue to sell off. This could be a bear trap and shorts could get screwed royally if um, they're betting on it coming back down to seven and uh, they have too much money in there so careful if you're playing red box it's in an interesting situation right now um, we could see a continuation if we get a break over 18 as you can see here 27 i mean it could rip through the 20s basically from there you never know you never know we've seen stocks do all kinds of crazy things GameStop, for example. So uh, that's what I'm looking at on Redbox. Break below 1380. You could play it to the downside and uh, play it to about 10 bucks. From there, if it breaks 10, um, 7 is another key level. So on the upside, on the flip side, if we break above 1550, then uh, watch for 18 again. Obviously, watch the levels in between, but look for that break over 18 for a strong continuation. If not, we'll just sell off in this area, and you'll see it kind of fizzle out. So that's what I got for you on Redbox. Um, to wrap it up, take a quick peek at AMC and GameStop like we always do. Um, if you're new, again, thank you. If you got this far, you're awesome. I know it's a lot to watch, a lot to listen to, and uh, I'm doing my best. So I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys are learning. hope you're making money most of all. And I uh, hope you're uh, getting a little entertainment slightly. I don't know. Anyways, AMC, looking for that break below 1108. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But um, I didn't even write this down. It's just sad. Break below 1108, and I believe the next target, 1030. So in that 10 range, it's basically key levels um, from 10, 9, 8. You can do the math. A break 11 over 1190. Um, we'll see resistance between 12 and 13 for sure. 
Um, but you never know. We've seen crazy things with AMC as we have GameStop. And this chart looks wild. Um, this is what happens when you hold a stock for about two years. So yeah, AMC has gone nuts. And that's all I have for today. So I hope you guys did well in the market. I know it was wild, but uh, you know, play it safe, play the cards that are dealt, and there's money to be made up and down. So uh, that's what I got for you. Hope you stay happy and healthy. And uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. I appreciate it. You guys are all freaking champs, all 11 of you. You guys are going to be so rich. You're going to look back and be like, freaking Pat's picks, man. Made so much bank. So uh, anyways, hope you guys are happy and healthy. See you next time.